if this was only used once to compute these, these tables um, and not used any further. Well, with that, I think I've, I've made my point clear and perhaps raised some interesting questions as to whether one should subvert the technology that three billion people rely on for their privacy. And I would suggest for the remainder of, of, the, of the hour um, to have Harald and Frank come back on stage and um, for the three of us to, to, have, to engage in a discussion with you as to whether this makes sense and, and we all want to go ahead showing that this technology is not to be used for any more security applications more than it already is. With that, thank you very much. So, questions. So, Carsten, uh, first questions and uh, apologies in advance. I have to put the devil's advocate hat, at, hat here on. Go ahead. Um, what are you, your thoughts and considerations on possible poisoning of uh, those computed tables? Because this is something that immediately crossed my mind. How do we, like, ensure right. quality if we get into this? Well, yeah, so the question um, is how, how, do, how do we prevent that somebody uploads bogus data and makes it available anonymously through BitTorrent? Well, that's easily answered. Um, it is statistically very easy to test whether a table contains the right information or not without downloading the entire table. So we, you would fetch a few random blocks through the BitTorrent and with just a few computations, you can, with the 99 plus probability, test whether this is the data you want. So definitely something we considered in the design of this. But thanks for the question. Just for my understanding, this, this rainbow table that we're then calculating, uh, you don't need any coordination to say you start at the keys with 0001, you start at some other point. It's just we all take some part of, the, of, of this cloud, and the more cloud you have, the quicker it is to crack calls. It, yes. It's just the random cloud that everybody has a part of. It's holographic, if, if you will. Right. So there's no coordination needed other than um, you shouldn't choose the same 32-bit random number. Um, so patch your Debian I think we box can do that. Before, before starting. Right? Uh, you seem very, very worried about the legal aspects of this problem, uh, or of this project. Is there a specific reason for this? Uh, you mentioned that the previously calculated table never was released. Right, um. it, was, it was not. Um, well, to answer the first part of your question, no, I'm, I'm not worried, since all I did was put some software on the internet, right? That is <laughs> crunching numbers. Okay, uh, regarding the legal aspects, um, building this tool uh, is certainly not illegal. Um, using it for intercepting other people's phone calls would be illegal, which we do not do. Um, this is a proof of concept, so we're trying to show that it's doable. That is the, the goal of the exercise. Um, regarding why has this been set up so paranoid again um, in a distributed way with no single point of failure and so on, um, the reason is that um, the, the statistics that the tech has been out for so long, um, the knowledge about the, the possibility of the attack versus the availability of this attack in a practical domain uh, seems to point that there are interests out there that want to prevent this to get into the, into the public hands. And if you look at who is buying these systems today, it's mostly intelligence agencies, so they know that it works and they know that it can be done. But they also know that the people uh, that tell them what to do, namely politicians and uh, big business bosses, uh, they don't use encryption at all. They use GSM phones like we do, uh, which means that as soon as somebody really builds a GSM interceptor for the masses, uh, they are into all kinds of problems. 
And so there is a certain pressure from governments to prevent this. So this is why this project <clears throat> has been set up in a way that it's as distributed as possible and as not mean a thing as possible. Any more opinions on that? Um, the, nothing bad except for a few uh, problems at the border. Um, but uh, somehow they, they are convinced to not do this anymore. So, uh, I have no clue. So it's, they just say they don't want to work in this domain publicly anymore. So there are endless amounts of rumors which I will not repeat here, but um, it boils down to the table has not been released, the project has been dead before we uh, basically reanimated it. Hi. Uh, you mentioned uh, it's possible to check the validity of a BitTorrent before downloading the whole thing. Does such a tool exist, or does that need to still be written? And secondly, uh, is there any particular place that you'd recommend advertising the .torrent files? Well, the way I understand BitTorrent is that you randomly yeah. seek the file anyhow. So whatever part of the file you download first, just run yeah. some checks on that. I don't think there's more software needed on the BitTorrent side. Yes, we do have the tools that would check whether any part of the table is consistent. Right. Is that on the track as well, yeah? Uh, yes. Okay. It's and and for advertising the .torrent files once you've made the .torrent and uploaded it and stuff? Uh, well, we have we have a Tor expert here. I believe there is there is a BitTorrent tracker within the Tor cloud somewhere. Is that so, Jake? <laughs> okay, so uh, Tor and BitTorrent is a touchy subject because uh, yes. Tor <laughs> is breaking breaking because uh, under the load of BitTorrent, so. Please don't transmit the files over Tor, but uh, only get the tracker, uh, tracker data over Tor. Sounds good. Thanks. So are any volunteers for FPGA clusters? <laughs> Well, if, was, if one person had all the resources in one place, could it be paralyzed to just run it on, say, 32 FPGAs at once? And yes, of course. You, you, need, you need some power to go in there. For, it, will, it will cost you, yeah, but we'll catch up later. <laughs> Any more questions? Any more opinions as in don't, please use the microphone. don't break the security base of my bank, please? Can we have somebody say that? <laughs> Wrong audience for that. Well, but that's, oh, that would be that's a ridiculous <laughs> point of view. The next bank is going to adopt it if we don't do this, right? No, well, I, I appreciate that, that you're an audience that doesn't, doesn't bring up this point, uh, because we all understand that, of course, full disclosure, 15 years into vulnerability is most urgent, urgently needed. Thanks. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you oh, guys off. No, Go no ahead. problem. So, I mean, basically, there are other vulnerabilities that are 35 years old, like DNS. So, there are cool things that now DNSSEC will allow us to do. Uh, for instance, encrypted voice calls over SIP, over uh, data networks. So, I'm very happy for you guys to do this because there will be solutions in time for, for people that want valid and, and encrypted things once, you, once this table is done. So... Yes, well... And, and that'll be... Uh, 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 that means that people can have so encryption. Uh, people should have encryption. Yeah, yeah, essentially, uh, the series of talks is to provide you ample warning, so that everybody can already think about what to do then. If people plan to build such software, come over to the booth there. We, we're <laughs> happy to fund you. We're a funding agency, so... Thanks. Good offer. Hi, I, I just had a look at the subversion code of the FPGA, and it <laughs> looks like it's a Milky, Milky Mist uh, SOC. Uh, it's a Micro 32 uh, CPU in there, but I didn't see the actual FPGA code of, of the thing that computes these numbers. Do you know if the FPGA code in the subversion is, is usable, or if it's just a demo thing? Let, let's get together here afterwards with the FPGA developer. He, he's somewhere. 